ready to shake it up. Capuano. And now even worse going on the other end with John Blue in the middle of it. John Blue's in the middle of it. And Kozik skates the Kozik. length of the ice. Goes the length of the ice to get a piece of John Blue. And Blue is throwing in the bunches and Kozik levels it with a right. Wow. Kozik's got the left hand free now. Goalie on goalie here. Blue coming in with a couple of rights. Kolzig now throwing in a left. The linesmen get in as they toss in a couple more at the end. We've got a Donnybrook. Sing it up! Those 80 games were just a prelude. It would take another two months and 17 more games for the Pirates to claim their treasure. The playoffs didn't start with a bang for the Pirates, who lost their postseason opener to the Albany River Rats at the Civic Center. It didn't take long for the Pirates to figure out how to exterminate the Rats, and the next four games belonged to Portland, thanks in no small part to two hat tricks from Mike Bobak, including a league-tying seven-point effort in Game 5. Next up, the team that edged the Pirates for the Northern Division Championship on the final day of the regular season, the Adirondack Red Wings. After splitting a pair on the road, the Pirates would take two out of three at the Civic Center. It was an emotional series that would return to Glens Falls for game six, a game that wouldn't be settled in regulation. 
and wouldn't be settled until the Pirates' first shot in overtime. Jeff Circa's shot heard round me. Out wide and pulls up at the point. He brings it back to Circa. Left wing circle. His slap. Yeah, he scores! Pirates win! Pirates win! Pirates are going to the Cup That goal gave the Pirates a 10-day layoff as Portland would prepare for the Moncton Hawks, Atlantic Division champions, and Calder Cup finalists. In the finals, Ole would become a household word in Maine as Olaf Kolzig would have his finest 10 days as a pro. Offensively, a budding new star was shining bright in Portland as Jason Allison scored his first professional goal, nine days shy of his 19th birthday. Pressure now gets started over to the far side. Allison weaves his way through the pretty move of back and scores! Jason Allison! The team split games one and two in Portland and headed east to the Moncton Coliseum. Again, the goalies held court. Kolzig put up a 50 save effort to lead the Pirates to a two to one double overtime win in game four to give Portland a three to one series lead. But the Hawks weren't done yet. Moncton's Stefan Beauregard countered by becoming the only netminder to shut out the Pirates all year. A four nothing win in game five that set the stage for game six. The scene was the Cumberland County Civic Center. The atmosphere electric. Six of the Cup Finals is underway. The Pirates getting left to right of their home whites before a sellout crowd here at the Cumberland County Civic Center. And Kevin Kaminsky plays the first hit of the game. Bodies flying out. The team that scored first had won each of the first five games, and it appeared the home team had drawn first blood on this Sunday. Corville has to get back to take the puck. Corville around the far boards on the left wing side. Steve Pops takes the shot. It goes through. Pirates score! His shot hit off somebody as it came through in the redirection and put the Pirates up. 1 0 here in the first. Well, what a great opportunity. Steve Pops, all kinds of confusion in front of Beauregard, so he just takes a blast. That puck goes in, but there's talk over at the penalty box. Rob Murray kind of went ballistic there trying to uh, call that, that goal, no goal. We'll have to see what happens. Linesman over there talking. Puck might have been kicked in off a skate. We'll have to see what the call is. I think it went in off a player that was down on the ice. I don't think it was kicked in, but maybe it was. Looks like no goal now. Referee Steve Wacom comes over to talk to Barry Trotz on the Pirates bench. Chris Jensen, Pirates captain. No goal. The goal has been waved off. And Instead, it was Moncton getting on the scoreboard first. Arnold Bloomston sends it cross eyes. It's taken by LeBlanc. LeBlanc sends it into the corner. Ken Klee back there for the Pirates. He works it up along the far boards. Pass taken there by McCoolchick. He feeds it over to the near side. Slap shot from the top of the near circle is battled over the rebound. Score for the Hawks. Shot came from Bloomston initially. It was Wilson banging away in there. Trailing 1-0 after one, the Pirates rallied in the second. Chris Jensen and Jeff Nelson scored second period goals to put the Pirates up 2-1. Ole, the goalie, backstopped it from there. The Pirates would score two more in the third to end any discussion of a game seven and start the dancing in the old port. Bumping is Picard, coming away with the puck. Picard, left wing circle, he scores! Michel Picard! Pirates lead it three to one, we're back to even strength. Pirates bring it up through center ice. Kaminsky to the left wing circle, he comes in front to Allison, he scores! Allison's goal set the final score, a 4-1 Pirates win, and a Calder Cup for Portland. Three seconds remaining, the seconds come down. The Pirates have won the Calder Cup. The party is on in Portland. They maul Olaf Kolzig coming out of the net. The rest of the team comes out on the ice. Kerry Clark, Jeff Serka, Lord Knopf, Darren McCausland. The entire crew coming out on the ice now. They are celebrating in front of the Pirates' net. The Portland Pirates have won the Calder Cup, duplicating the feat by the Maine Mariners back in 1978. Olaf 
Nicole Zink. Got to be the favorite for the tournament MVP, the playoff MVP award. What a great scene out on the ice right now. Fans on their feet, throwing ribbons out on the ice. The Hawks, meantime, back on the other end, salute a great team, the Pirates. The Jack Butterfield Trophy, named in honor of returning president Jack Butterfield, is given annually to the player voted by the coaches as the most valuable player in the Calder Cup playoffs. Here to present the trophy to this year's winner, the MVP, is the American Hockey League Vice President, Gordy Enziano. And the winner is Olaf Kuzi! No big surprise there. No surprise there at all. Oli Kolzig uh, playing just phenomenal all year and really took this team, especially up in Monkey Town. Boy, let me tell you, he faced uh, a lot of rubber. This place is going absolutely crazy. <laughs> well, it should. Now his teammates surround him as he comes back. Ladies with his and gentlemen, hardware. retiring president Jack Butterfield. If I may have your attention for a moment, please. Firstly, I would like to congratulate the Moncton Hawks on the tremendous job they did here. They made a real series out of it. Secondly, I would like to congratulate you fans for the tremendous support you show on your hockey team. I realize you're all anxious for the final presentation, but if I may for a moment, please, I would like to congratulate Tom Ebright for bringing hockey back to Portland. And last, and last but not least, I would like to congratulate Godfrey Wood for all of the unique and distinctive ways he had this year of promoting hockey in this community. Now, if Captain Chris Jensen would please come forward, it would be my pleasure to present him with the cup. Frank. There it is. The boys got the Calder Cup, and uh, boy, this place is just electric. Cup held high. They're going to take it around for their skate. Trading it off. Chris Jensen, Brian Kern, they're not going to give that thing up. <laughs> Letting the, the main fans, everybody's going to want to get a grab on that thing. The celebration lasted into the holiday, and what a holiday it was. Eight months earlier, the Pirates brought hockey back to Portland. Now they brought the championship to the city by the bay. Three days later, that city honored the Pirates with a hero's salute as Portland lined up 15,000 strong to thank their champions.